Anyway, I've got my first guest in the studio with me right now. I'm very, very gassed to have them in because last week I attended a screening for a new short film directed and written by award-winning filmmaker Iggy London starring the rising star Joshua Cameron and it's a beautiful film about identity, belonging and how we navigate and place ourselves in society. Both Iggy and Joshua are with me in the building right now. Let's see what's been going on. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Ooh, it feels like an echo. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like an echo. How are we both doing? Good, man, good. good. Okay, one, okay. One, one person at a time. Josh, how are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm amazing, amazing. Good. Okay, just come a bit closer to the mic for me. Hello. Thank you. Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> and how about you, Iggy? How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Happy to be here. Good. Yeah. So like I said, we are here to talk about this new short film. Just very quickly, how's it going so far? Before we dive into it a little bit more, how's it been for you? Because it came out, what, like a few weeks ago now? Yeah, so we literally done its um, London sort of premiere a couple of weeks ago um, during London Film Festival. And it did its world premiere at um, Venice Film Festival. So it's been amazing. I'm not going to lie. Like, I've actually enjoyed every single second of it. Um, it's brilliant to to see it sort of um, rise and be sort of seen in Venice and like mm. one of the biggest film festivals in the world. Amazing. And then being recognised at London. I kind of see it as like a an away game versus like a home game. And I feel like home, it, it really got its love and its shine. Um, so, yeah, I'm just really happy, really happy Good. to just be promoting it and talking about it. For Good. Sure. And what about you, Joshua? It's, it's your face. You're the lead. <laughs> You're seeing yourself on big, big screens. How's it been for you? It's been like life changing. I remember just shooting every day for the four days and then just the experience after it that it's just been life changing and I can't wait for everyone to see it yes I can't wait as well <laughs> so just so we get a little bit more context for people listening that might not have heard of you before Iggy just give us like a very quick brief of how you even became to be a filmmaker yeah so basically um it started as a new year's resolution oh. <laughs> Um, in 2016, I wrote a poem um, called Black Boys Don't Cry and then um, got asked to basically perform it at um, an event. I did it. And then at the end of the event, someone told me to make um, a film out of it. And I was like, um, a film? Um, I'm supposed to be a lawyer. I'm going to be a, this lawyer guy. I'm going to do this whole um, world of being this, you know, working in an office. Like, that was my thing. And then suddenly someone told me to make a film out of it. So I was like, okay, let me do it. Mm -hmm. So in 2016, I got, like, a bunch of friends to make a film and I premiered it in East London. And then it sort of, basically, that was that was... That was it. I became a filmmaker after that night and made films um, every single year afterwards. Uh, made a film called Velvet and then basically became the sort of this main mm. film that people knew about my work. And it basically followed the story of a boy who um, loses his life to knife crime, but we don't see the perpetrator or we don't see um, the knife or we don't see anything like that. And it was just a bit kind of like um, kind of talking point about society and where we're at. Um, and then, yeah, we kind of like full circle made us my first ever narrative film with Area Boy. Um, and yeah, it's been great. I love that this started as a New Year's resolution. I bet you there's so many people at home kicking themselves like, imagine if I actually done that thing <laughs> that I wanted to do years ago. I might be sat on BBC Radio London chatting about it. Exactly. I love it. What about you, Joshua? Give us some insight on your creative career so far. So I started at the age of eight within the West End as young Simba in the UK and Ireland Jeez. tour of Lion King. And then from there, I transitioned to Matilda, then young Michael Jackson in Thrill Alive. And then obviously puberty happened. So I had to <laughs> be dropped from the rest of them at an uh, unfortunate time. And then I remember when I was 16, I got my first role in a short film directed by Abraham Adeyemi called No More Wings, which yes. is currently on YouTube with 2.5 million views and wow. it won Best Narrative Short Film in the Tribeca Film Festival in 2020. You came That's right. red. I love <laughs> this. <laughs> and now you're starring in Area Boy, yeah. directed by Iggy. Mm -hmm. I love this. Okay, right. So Iggy, take us right to the beginning. Mm -hmm. What was the thought, the question, I don't know, the image that sparked this idea for Area Boy? Yeah. I think the first thing for me was that um, I wanted to make a film that felt quite British, but at the same time, it wasn't 
sort of feel with the, the normal sort of tropes of what um, a stereotypical film is like, and I, um, like that's made in London or made um, sort of in the UK. And the biggest thing that people have always used as a reference point is like one of the like most iconic and culturally relevant um, sort of TV shows, um, Top Boy. But um, I ultimately wanted to do something which is quite different, completely different, mm. void of the like um, the use of sort of um, gang culture or like sort of like these ideas or what we normally kind of see and do something which is quite fresh and new. Um, I wanted people to firstly see like just like um, a group of boys just living their life in a very like honest way, in a very real way of, of uh, like a way which is like a reflection of London. And um, yeah, it just came about by just that kind of kind of experience of trying to find a story which felt honest and authentic, but which felt really real. Um, and then it kind of fell sort of like easily into like my sort of experience. I grew up... Um, a very religious in you know sort of person and had a very religious family and so as a result I felt the need to sort of live in a sort of a world where you just do you just pray mm. and you live life and you sort of like live in these kind of like tropes of all these boxes and I thought I wanted to find a way where I could involve that type of story but also make it feel British but make it feel universal and so yeah, really, it, so it became a story about pretending, about trying mm. to be something that you're not and trying to find ways to like navigate why you do the things that you do and not knowing why you do it and finding sort of um, this like a guardian angel and people you wouldn't, other, you, mm. you wouldn't otherwise expect them to be your sort of like your confidant. Yeah, mm. I love it. I really do. It's such a beautiful film. Thank you. Um, Joshua, what about when you first got the script and you read through it? What was your thought of this? And this is before, let's say, you even auditioned. What make what made you want to audition and like audition to the point where you're like, I want this role? <laughs> okay, so I remember when I first got the script, um, it wasn't the typical just about gangs, about murder, as Iggy said, about drugs and all of that, similar to Top Boy. And I realised with the character of Eli, I could play very different, like different ways of how I could portray this character. There were so many ways. And I remember especially even doing the audition process, like Iggy would redirect me, he would give me this certain way to do it and then I'll and then I'll change it to that way. And then yeah, it was just I like the fact that you don't know what Eli's gonna do next. And you don't know what his emotions are in every given moment, do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's just a very fun character to explore. And why is it important as a young actor, particularly a young black boy in London, to have the opportunity to play roles that aren't just, which are still brilliant roles like mm. within Top Boy, but aren't just in that box? Because me personally, it, you're, it branches yourself out. It doesn't keep yourself in that one bracket of, uh, you're just a gang member and you're just the lead of this pack, do you know what I mean? With mm. Eli, it's, there's no signs of just typical young black boy you know how his role and you know how his life is going to end mm. you don't know how Eli's gonna like transition to, towards the future do you know what I mean so yeah Absolutely. it's very important to just change the narrative <laughs> is that and that's why we need writers like yourself Iggy so if you just tuned in now we've got Iggy London award um film director in the building along with the lead of his latest short film Area Boy Joshua Cameron's in the building so um, Iggy, when you're now auditioning for the main role, obviously you've written it, you have this idea in your head of what your lead character looks like. What was it about Joshua that made you go, yeah, he's got it. That's that's real life Eli. Yeah. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing was that uh, the most, most of the people that we auditioned, they had this bravado ah. <laughs> no tino shade but basically <laughs> uh, but basically they had a bravado they came in being like i'm really confident i've done several sort of like tv shows i've, I've been in theater i've done all of these type of things and for me like i love that but i think the character of eli is someone who's very broken down um deep inside he has a, a he has a full sort of character but how he projects himself or how he sort of portrays himself is someone who is quite quiet and insular and sort of like um, um, he has all these different thoughts that are happening inside but really nobody knows what's actually happening inside. He's mm. one, one of those people, he hides it all off um, from society or from the world. And so I needed a character who was able to like um, perform without performing or, or, or sort of um, act without 
too much acting in it. I think it was all in the mm. eyes. And I feel like I remember Joshua, we saw so many different Eli's. We saw, um, we watched so many different self tapes and great, very well known, established um, actors. Um, and I remember, I will never forget, like, Joshua comes into the audition room and he's very quiet, he doesn't say anything. He's like super quiet, he smiles. <laughs> He smiles, he's like, hi, really happy to be here. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, hi, what are you up to? You're like, hey, what's going on? How are you? And he's like, really quiet. So I was like, okay, this is this is interesting. Um, and then I just asked him to basically read the lines. And he just does it immaculately. Like, if, like, obviously, as I've always said, like, Joshua, you're an insane actor. You, you have the skill set of making something which is so layered but so stripped back is something which is really hard for an actor to do and Joshua did it so effortlessly so yeah it was it was really great to see and then obviously as, as Joshua said it was that being able to redirect and try to get different versions out of, of, of Joshua not necessarily even the right ones but understanding if he's able to sort of um, listen to direction pretty well and he did it so effortlessly and then he just left like he didn't even say he was like thank you so much bye and, I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. like, and it was it was knowing fully well that like he embodied um, Eli so effortlessly um, even if he wasn't really Eli I feel like there was a, there was something about him that was quite quiet that mm. um, but also the fact that he was such a he listened to direction really easily and obviously it's a short film you got four days to shoot you're shooting on film and um, it was important to be to have someone who was able to like just be able to act but change direction really easily and not, and not have to worry about whether that's going to have a knockoff effect about in, in relation to the next days or or other sort of scenes that we're doing or whether it makes sense he was able to really just understand the material mm. and go with that so that was that was brilliant mm, well yeah. done I hope people are taking notes at home come in modest <laughs> <laughs> be quiet <laughs> you come in the room so I know we've spoken about Top Boy you've referenced it a few times you were actually in the cast with some Top Boy like yeah. Yeah, cars yeah, yeah, how yeah. was it for you actually just working amongst this brilliant crew and cast and especially it's still early days of your career mm -hmm. how was it for you and also you've got the responsibility of being the lead yeah. i bet you didn't really have time to breathe every day we need joshua <laughs> we need joshua how was it for you no it was amazing man like, i remember iggy telling me that we've got actors from top way but then immediately as soon as i came up there zoom meeting with iggy I'm all Googling who it could possibly be. So I'm thinking it could be Sharon Duncan Brewster or it could be Jalade Abasola. And then when I found out it was Malcolm Camilletti, I said, yo, like, I used to grow up watching my man, you know, <laughs> do you get me? So then I remember meeting him in person and automatically, like, he just gave the sense of, like, that brotherly bond that he wasn't just, oh, yeah, man's from Top Boy and I'm ahead of you lot in the game. Do you know what I mean? Like, he actually gave us, like this sort of like life lessons in terms when it comes to the acting and he showed us like yo like this is just a stepping stone for you lot and just be prepared to like work with me and work alongside me and just learn some things you know what I mean and that was I loved every moment of it shout out to Malcolm mm. and Jalali exactly. man. absolutely <laughs> exactly. so even on the note of like just learning things this was obviously a process for you Iggy mm. um, I mean we say short film but the process is not necessarily short from like writing it and even the pr like process of writing is a lot but every process teaches you something about yourself. So what did this specific process of creating Aerial Boy teach you? Or what did you discover about yourself during this time? Yeah, I think um, what I discovered was um, I'm impatient. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> quite, I'm quite an impatient person. Um, <laughs> I went after making my, my first sort of short film, I then got signed. And then I started making music videos and commercials. And... If, if anyone's in the film industry, they know that the pre-production stage or ideation stage of a music video or a commercial is quite quick. You may have the idea already or like the artist or the label has an idea of how they sort of want to market their artist or you have or market their brand and all you do is sort of, sort of lend your eye to how beautiful it can look or, mm. or the idea of what it is. But ultimately, when making a film like this, there was a lot of... Um, time to think and you work with a development exec who um, who sort of um, champions the film and tries to question things and so um, you know ver like versus 
um, making it, working in a commercial like your first idea or like your you you only got one idea and that idea you sort of pitch and then suddenly people accept it or they don't. Whereas here, like there was so much room to change the the characters of Eli or Kevin who plays uh, who's played by Malcolm Camilletti or the pastor or like what their trajectory is or what their emotional arc is. There's so many different things that could be sort of explored. And so each time that you work with um you know those people that the, the people that develop it they're they're also they're also just questioning you and so you got really understand why you're making the film and then really and they're super important because when you do that you start to realize oh these are all the things that we discussed in pre-production stage or like development stage so that you are so well informed mm. and you understand exactly what you're making when it comes to the actual shooting of it and also you're only there for four days and you might be, we had a huge cast we worked with so many people we worked with people who were not necessarily trained actors or had like, lots of experience and so they were street casted and um, we worked with a lot of we had a church scene that has like a lot of um supporting actors and so um we had like you know, we were in lakes, mm. we were running in fields, <laughs> we were like in houses, we were just in these like, um, we were in Peckham, shooting in Peckham. And so there's lots of like um, challenges because you're having, you're having to make a film in such a short period of time. And so, yeah, what I learned the mo you know, most um, was just being patient and understanding mm. that it will eventually happen. You just got to put in the work and actually um, believe in the story and the story will speak for itself. I mm -hmm. guess. And yeah. exactly, the story is here and it does speak for itself. Where can we actually see the film? Because obviously, and I've, I've not wanted to give too much away because I want people to go and watch it. Yeah. But where can people actually watch Area Boy? So, currently, this is kind of complicated. It's a complicated question um, <laughs> and a complicated so answer. So, watch the film. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just to watch, the, watch the film in it. But basically, um, the film is going through its. Um, festival tour it premiered at venice film festival as i said and then um it's doing its london film festival but obviously this is the second film festival it's actually been set, um, submitted to and premiered so um it's going through the whole circuit we want to it, we want it to have its US sort of premiere, um, African premiere. We want it to just be able to be seen by so many different people. It was available on the BFI player for a while during London Film Festival, and there will be sort of private screenings as and when throughout the year. But um, essentially, once it's completed its festival run, it will be available in places like BBC iPlayer or, or places like that. So watch this space because obviously it's um it's a beautiful film and it needs to be premiered in the right place. It sure. does. So once it is released, are you going to tell me when it's out yes. so I can let everyone know? <laughs> so I feel like this is such a tease. <laughs> you know, like, where can we see it? Um, we're running out of time. So really quickly, Joshua, what's next for you? What's uh, coming up that we could be looking out for? Um, I'm not able to disclose what the what? title is. That means it's good. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have something coming out on Netflix next year. Really? Yeah. Our family, we've got to get together. <laughs> we've got to celebrate. What about you, Iggy? What is next yeah, for Iggy? For me, um, it's just working on my narrative sort of body of work. I'm currently developing a feature film, which I'm super, super, super excited to start, to start working on. Um, and it's got some amazing people in it. It's got some amazing ideas. It's a beautiful, beautiful, honest um, film that people won't expect from me so I'm really looking forward to showing that but just before we go I just want to say a massive thank you to Joshua Cameron you are an insane actor and thank people you, need to see your work so yeah well done honestly you <laughs> just have to get air on it in there thank you so much both for coming down and just taking the time out to chat with me I wish we had longer to go into it but I think this is enough to get people to go exactly. and watch it before I let you go where can people find you both and follow your journey see what this this Netflix film is coming out and your feature <laughs> film. Joshua, you go first. Uh, you can find me on Instagram by Joshua Cameron underscore. And Iggy? Yes, you can find me on at Iggy London on all sort of um, platforms. Amazing. Soon we'll be seeing you both at the Oscars, right? That's right. That's right. All right, right then. <laughs> Thank you.